Hello. Today I'm going to tell you a little bit about uh, letter width and letter weight. Um, my research field is uh, typeface legibility. And I've been working with this for some time now. But originally when I started out, what really fascinated me about this is that we can use statistics to come up with answers to questions that can be implemented directly into real design. The first experiment has to do with weight and visual angle. If we look at this image, on the top we have a large A that is viewed from a great distance. And at the bottom we have a smaller A that is viewed from, a, from up close. And to the observer in front, these two A's are actually seen at the same visual angle. Small visual angles are the ones that are small in sizes, that appear to be small in sizes. I would like you to take a look at this image. I'm guessing that most of you see an F now, yeah? This is related to frequency channels. So if I take down the F in sizes, I'm guessing you can better see the D now, is that right? Yeah? So these are low frequency channels, and that is what we use when we, look, when we uh, work with the visual angles. So for low frequency channels, basically we lose all the details of the letters, and what is left is the proportion and the weight. So these two things are very important for visual angles. There are several ways of testing this. You can either, so testing using accuracy. So you can either do so that you have the stimuli stand still, and then you have the observer move closer and closer towards the stimuli. Or otherwise, you can have the observer stand still and either move the stimuli closer or have the size of the stimuli changing. So basically, so you're changing the visual angle for the observer. And this has been done by several researchers. In 2005, James Shirdy and his colleagues tested out Franklin Gothic in different styles. And what they found was that the book version of Franklin Gothic had to be viewed at larger sizes than all the remaining weights. However, the remaining weights, there were no difference between the different the medium and the, book, uh, the bold sizes. In a very old experiment from 1912, Elizabeth Roadline tested a range of different versions of the Cheltenham family. And what she found, as you can see here, was an influence of both width and weight on the performance of the funds. The two lower ones were read at a closer distance, had to be read at a closer distance than the other ones. And as you can see here, the, the closer distance ones, they are more narrow than the other ones. And you can see between the bold and the white ones, the bold was read at a far further distance than the white one. So weight and width both benefit here. So, we know that weight has a positive effect, but how does it work at different visual angles? This is something that we were interested in investigating. Our hypothesis of this first experiment was then, the effect of letter weight is greater at smaller visual angles. So, the idea comes from this, and if you look at this row of M's, they're all set in a medium weight. And the smaller sizes here, they actually appear to be lighter than the larger sizes. However, when we adjust this, adding bold weights in the smaller sizes instead, they actually appear to have the same weight. So what we did was we tested 20 people, had them stand at two meters distance, had single exposures of letters slightly out in the peripheral visual field. And the task was then for the participant to say out loud whether they thought this, uh, what, what kind of letter they thought that they saw. 
these were the different weights and style that we tested. So we tested different weights, and we tested small, medium, and large sizes. These were the test funds. So what did we find? As you can see here, it appears like it's quite obvious that the smaller sizes were more difficult to recognize than the larger sizes. But when we look into the individual relationship between them, what we found was that the small size and the medium size, the bolder weights perform better than the narrower ones, as you can see here. When we looked at the larger sizes, it was interesting that there was evidence that these same weights, they were exactly the same. So following this, we actually proved our hypothesis in showing that for smaller visual angles, weight has a greater effect than for larger visual angles. When we looked at the lightest weight, as you can see, like in all cases, it was outperformed by all the other weights. So light weights, not a good idea. And again, when we looked at the relationship between the bolder weights in the small size and the medium size, we found that there was evidence for no difference at all between the bold weights. Following this, as long as you have some sort of boldness to the, your letters for smaller visual angles, you should be fine. Experiment two. This has to do with width and peripheral vision. When we read, the eye jumps along the line in a series of saccades, and in between these, we, have, we fixate on the text. So in that way, we need our peripheral vision to actually decide where to place the next fixation. Peripheral vision is therefore important for normal vision readers. It is also important for a number of low vision readers. There are a number of uh, eye diseases that affect the reader in such a way that they lose part of the center of vision. One of these is called AMD, and is something that quite a lot of older people would end up suffering from. So if you suffer from one of these diseases, and you still want to be able to read, you'll have to teach yourself a way of reading in your, using your peripheral vision. Therefore, we need to make the type legible in the peripheral vision. The way the eye is structured is so that you have in the center of vision, for about two degrees in the center of vision, we have what is called cones. And cones basically make us able to see details and see accurate things. However, as soon as we get slightly out, the number of cones drastically goes down and will be replaced by what are called roots. And the further out we get, the more roots we have. Roots makes us able to see at night and very good at detecting motions. So animals like owls and cats have quite a lot of roots in their eyes. But roots are not very good at identifying letters. So if you remember what happened at visual angle, the image blurred out. This is not what happens at peripheral vision. You would rather say that at peripheral vision, we, have a lo we, ha we lose details, so we have a loss of information. So whatever happens in small visual angles can't necessarily be transferred into the peripheral vision. The second experiment, the methodology we use, is called lexical decision task. And basically what this is, is that we have the observer, we measure the time it takes to make a decision of whether a presentation is a word or a non-word. And others have done this as well. In this experiment by Ben Sawyer, with his co colleagues from MIT and Monotype, they tested different versions of the Frutiger Next family. And they found an lexical decision task in the center of vision 
that the regular version of top was, more, was faster recognized than the condensed version at the bottom. In this experiment that I have carried out in relation with Mary Dyson in 2016, we found that there is a limit also in the center of vision. There's a limit that you, if you make like very, very wide letters, then uh, the reaction time will be slower. So following that, we know from the Sawyer experiment that at the center of vision, somewhat wider letters are important for, for recognition time. But what happens in the peripheral vision? Will that be the same? This leads to our hypothesis of the second experiment, where we say that the effect of letter width is dependent on the location on the peripheral visual field. The reason for this is that we thought that so we have the sense, if we have the red dot as the center of vision, if we have a narrow typeface, then that would fit more into the visual area than would a wider typeface, where you would lose some details of the words. However, the same is not necessarily the case if you have it the center of vision or if you have it slightly below or above. So what we did was that we tested these five different fonts, different width of the same typeface family. And we did it so that the participant had to look at the dot in the middle, and then we had them say, press two different keys on the keyboard to whether it was a word or a non-word. And also at the side and at the top and at the bottom. So what did we find? In relation to the top and bottom, we basically confirmed the findings of Sawyer and colleagues in showing that the narrow version was read at a slower pace than the two wider versions. The same was also the case with the second most narrow one. However, when we exposed it to the right peripheral vision, we found the same thing, which disproved our hypothesis. So this indicates that the benefit of large counters actually overrule the problems that might be in losing letters in the word. That was the end of experiment two. So, to sum up, when you're working on signage, or on small point sizes, either on screen or on print, small sizes will always benefit from bolder weights. Larger visual si uh, angle sizes, here the boldness is not as essential. And as long as you do have bold to your letter, you can have various ranges of boldness without uh, lowering legibility. And finally, if you are concerned with high legibility, never ever use lighter weights. The second experiment. Here we found that if you're working with few words at a time, wider letter shapes appear to benefit uh, word recognition. However, this was only in, in, in a single word recognition. But what would happen in running text? Would this also be something that we would find in the reading speed, speed of longer text pieces? This is something we would like to look into in the future. This leads to the thing that you can't really, there isn't one most original legible typeface. It, you always have to know the specific reading situation that a typeface will appear in for you to make it a, a very legible. Oh, sorry. So, now I'm getting towards the end of the talk, and some of you might have noticed in the catalog 
that I actually promised to tell you about the relationship between weight and width. And I know I haven't really done that. Uh, <laughs> I'm very sorry. But the thing is that we actually we did look into this. We did carry out an experiment of 20 people testing different versions of this chart, of the fonts in this chart. And what happened was basically that the result came out and all over the place. Um, so we couldn't really use it. But that's OK, because this is how legibility research works. And some, it's difficult. Sometimes you don't really know what your experiments are going to show. But I think this is also what makes it interesting and why I'll keep on working on this. And hopefully someday I will actually have an answer to you on this question. Thank you for listening.